everybody, Chris the Old S Retro Gamer here. Uh, today I'm going to do another pickups video. Uh, it's probably going to be the last one I do for a little while because I'm going to start slowing down on the collecting because uh, I'm trying to get some of the higher tiered games for at least the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Genesis. And yeah, that means I got to start uh, being smart about my purchases and whatnot. So as you can tell, I have already started that because I don't have a lot of purchases for a few of the older systems, especially the Nintendo. I haven't bought anything new for that in a while. Um, but I, I have gone uh, a little crazy with some of the other ones, so let's check it out. So for starters, let's go for the Sega Genesis, starting with Shikan. Um, it's an action game. I remember having it back in the day. It was extremely hard. I did not like the music, but it was fun. It was very challenging. Uh, and I do believe it was based on a comic book, but I always did like this one. Really wanted to get that back in my collection. Um, I made a few deals on Facebook again, and uh, one was for a, a number of Genesis titles and some Nintendo 64 ones as well. Uh, and this was one of them, Final Zone. It's uh, by Renovation. It's a gigantic mech game where you're basically running through the streets in a giant mech suit, taking out soldiers and tanks and stuff like that. Um, it's fun. It's just, it's not the greatest game I've ever played. Uh, but it's entertaining, at least for a little while. Next is one of my favorite games for the system, Gauntlet 4. Uh, I had a Nomad back in the day, and um, I had a, a night job at a limousine place, and I would bring that with me most nights. And I would play this game for hours, hours and hours. Uh, it was the closest I was ever going to get to playing the arcade game. And, uh, yeah, I still think that uh, game is awesome. A lot of fun. Uh, here's another game I used to play back in the day, The Immortal. One of the goriest games I remember being on the system back in the day outside of Mortal Kombat. You could do some messed up stuff in this game. Uh, cutting people's heads off. <laughs> cut people in half vertically. Remember one guy, you cut the top of his head off and his skull cap slams on the ground and splashes all over the place and his brain's pulsating. It's pretty awesome. It's a very hard game. I remember the Nintendo version, which was it did not feature any of the gore, uh, was super hard. A friend of mine beat it once, and uh, I, well, I saw him do it. Uh, I'm still trying to beat this game to this day because this is one of the hardest games I've ever played. Next is Red Zone. Um, it's a really cool game. Uh, it's like part Contra and part the top-down uh, scenes from Thunder Force 2, I want to say. It's different. Music in this game is amazing, I have to say. Uh, I recently downloaded a bunch of soundtracks for a bunch of Genesis games. The soundtrack of this and another game that I have here, uh, I've been listening to a lot lately. The soundtracks are amazing. The game is awesome, too. Don't get me wrong. Road Rash 2, uh, I found this for five bucks at a store, so I picked it up. I never played this one. I remember playing the first one, and I really liked it, but it's a motorcycle racing game where you get to beat people up with chains while you're, while you're racing. Yeah, I did it again. I picked up Shaq Fu for the Genesis. I do have it for the Super Nintendo. You might remember that from the other pickup video. But, I, you know, I actually played the Super Nintendo one. I didn't think it was that bad, but this is the one that is shit. It is bad. But, you know, like I said, I got to have bad with the good, and I got it pretty cheap. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Uh, don't need to say much about this, but I'm just disappointed that I ended up getting this Greatest Hits version. I didn't realize the one that I was purchasing off Facebook was this. I thought it was in the hardcover. But, whatever. It's still Sonic 3. Not my favorite game in the series. It's still Part 2. Next is another game that I got off of... Uh, Facebook for a very good price compared to what it's going for on eBay. That is Splatterhouse 3. Awesome game. Gory fun. Um, although this one is a little more exploration based compared to when the other ones are just a, you know, a simple side scroller. This one you're exploring different rooms and you have the choice to go into different rooms and all that. Uh, it's not as good as part two. Part two I thought was pretty rad. But this one's not bad either. Uh, I don't know why it's so expensive. This is not a rare game by any means. But I'm glad that I can't have that in my collection, although I really do want to get a copy of Part 2. Um, another game I got for 5 bucks, Starflight. Uh, it's a... It looks like a role-playing game. I haven't played it yet, but it looks kind of like Star Control, and I love me some Star Control. And if this is anything like that, I'm going to 
play the shit out of this. This is a pad to tail, so do not even try to contain your tears. This is the other game that I've been listening to the soundtrack to a lot that I mentioned earlier. Uh, Subterranean. Um, picture Solar Jetman mixed with Sinistar. I hunger. I guess. And it's it's pretty awesome. It's under you're underground in this little ship and you're going around rescuing people in uh, in these underground caverns. And every once in a while you fight bosses and whatnot. It is it is a lot of fun. It is really hard though. But the music is amazing too. Uh, I love the Super Nintendo version of this. I'm not very happy with this Genesis one, but true lies. The Super Nintendo one was actually a lot of fun, and for a movie based game, it wasn't bad. This one I don't like very much, even though I, I think I paid like six or seven bucks for it. But it was not it's not bad, but it's not great. The Super Nintendo version is a lot better. And lastly, this is a game I've been trying to get since I got back into collecting. Uh, and I hadn't been able to find it for a decent price. And I finally did. And that is Truxton. Uh, I saw Metal Jesus Rocks play this in one of his videos. It was about, well, they were playing a bunch of shooters. It was him and uh, Drunken Master Paul. And I never did have this back in the day. But I'm really heavily into shooters now for some reason. I don't know why. I never really was back then, but I am now. Uh, and I play this, and god damn is this game fun. It is like as old school as you can get. This is like one of the, this is beyond old school. <laughs> this is like, yeah, I can't explain it. Um, a lot of fun. I really like it. I'm glad that I can have this in my collection. Okay, now it's time for the Super Nintendo games. And like I said, I've been biding my time with these because I really want to get some of the, the big hitters. I want to get Castlevania 4, I want to get Contra 3, I want to get Super Metroid, and those are super expensive right now. So when I see a couple that I do want that are lower on the list that are for good prices, I will pick them up, but I haven't been seeing a lot of those lately. So I did get in an, uh, a Facebook deal, NBA Jam. Uh, I do have the tournament edition for the Saturn, but this is the one that I was playing all the time when it first came out. I love this game. Me and my friend Gary used to play this and trash talk each other like no one's business. Still a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, boom shakalaka. Uh, another one of my favorite games, which is why I purchased it when I saw it for a decent price. Um, Star Trek Starfleet Academy Starship Bridge Simulator. I'm a huge Star Trek fan. I've mentioned it before. Uh, this one I played a lot back in the day. It had polygon graphics in it for the starships, which was kind of like a big deal back when that for this game first came out. Um, but my favorite part of the game is that you can do simulations of the dogfights from the movies, at least the original uh, cast movies. So you can do The Wrath of Khan, you can do Star Trek 3, you can do Undiscovered Country with the cloaking uh, bird of prey. It's pretty awesome. Um, the game itself, when you're doing like the story mode, is okay, I guess, but those scenarios are what makes this game for me completely. It is awesome. I love it. And the other one is Excalibur 2097. Um, this game introduced me to a band that I still love to this day, even though they only made one album and one single, uh, and that is, uh, Psycho Sonic. Um, they're a techno band, the first techno band I ever heard, and I still love them to this day, even though it's, they're extremely dated, but, uh, the game is a lot of fun. It's a side-scrolling action game that's kind of like Strider, um... But the music is awesome, and it's it's actually pretty fun, even though it's it doesn't control all that great. It's very stiff, but I enjoy it. So that's it for the Super Nintendo games. Like I said, I haven't been actively looking for any other than the um, higher price ones that I want to get. I'm not going to buy any of those until I can find a decent deal and complete. Uh, so, But I have been looking for PlayStation 1 games a lot, and I found a bunch that I am happy that I have now. Starting with these long boxes, I'm not sure if I show this one off in a previous pickups video, but I had to repurchase it. Um, that is Fade to Black. Uh, the one that I had purchased off eBay originally didn't have the instruction book, and the game ended up being so scratched up that I couldn't play it. And by the time I found that out, the warranty, I guess, the, the, the time limit had expired on when I could do a return. So I basically have a game I can't play. So I had to repurchase it. This time it's complete. It's a sequel to Flashback Quest for Identity, although it's not a side-scrolling game like the old-school Prince of Persia. This one is like a third-person adventure puzzle game. Uh, it's not bad. It's not great. It's fun. It's just if you're expecting, you know, what uh, Flashback was, you're not going to get it with this one. But it is cool on its own. The next one is a classic, and I had to have it in this long box. 
Resident Evil. Yeah. I spent hours and hours, like I stayed up into the wee hours of the morning playing this game when it first came out. Um, I haven't played through it in a while. I've been actually looking for the GameCube remake of this. But since I can't find that for a decent price, this is going to have to do. And I'm not sad about that at all. Uh, awesome game, classic. Kicks ass. Oh, yeah. And then Thunderstrike 2, which is a helicopter uh, action game. Um, picture like um, Super Thunderblade. Even the name is kind of similar. Uh, just in 3D. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's not the greatest game ever, but I think I got it for like $5, so I can't complain. And it's complete. Uh, next is for the ones in jewel cases. I got a Kuji the Heartless, uh, which is like a, um, it's kind of like a beat em up. If you remember Shadow Man, this is, reminds me a lot of Shadow Man. It's pretty awesome. Then there's Bio Freaks, which is a fighting game by Midway, the people that made Mortal Kombat. Uh, the, the characters aren't as great or as awesome. I mean, they're, they're kind of cool looking, but they're just, they're all kind of generic play wise. They're all kind of the same. Um, really gory, really, it, it's not that bad of a game. It's, it's actually pretty fun, even though it gets tiresome real quick because there aren't that many characters to choose from. Blaster Master, blasting again. Yeah, it's, it's Blaster Master in name only. Um, there's some cool stuff going on, but for the most part, it's not anywhere near as cool as the original Nintendo one was. Duke Nukem Time to Kill. This one is not a first person shooter. This one is a third person game. Uh, outside of the fact that it has a really cool... A Stabbing Westward song playing over the opening cinematic. Um, it's not that great. I mean, it is it is fun. I'm not sad that I have it. I mean, I found it for a really good price. Um, but I still prefer the 3D Duke Nukem games. Even Duke Nukem Forever over this one. Another classic, Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey. It's a side-scrolling puzzle game in the way like Flashback was. Um, with more of a puzzle element to it, where there's little froggy looking guy trying to, to free his people who are slaves in this underground labyrinth. Um, I remember this game being amazing and I played it for hours on end. I never actually did beat it or its sequel, but I'm going to do that now. Pitfall 3D. I know how people complained about like even the Nintendo Pitfall game was nothing like the original one for the Atari. Um, yeah, they all kind of go off in their own different directions. Even the ones for the Super Nintendo and Genesis. I can't remember what those were called. But, yeah, this is the same. It's it's just, it's it's got elements that remind me of Pitfall for the Atari, but at the same time, it's just kind of like, why even bother? But it's not bad. I mean, it's playable. If it didn't have the Pitfall name attached to it, I'd probably like it a lot more. And then Road Rash 3D. Uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool, I guess. Uh, I still prefer the Genesis ones over this, even though it is, it has a cool soundtrack. Who's on it? Uh, Kid Rock, Sugar Ray. CIV, full on the mouth, yeah. Uh, it has a cool soundtrack, and it is fun, but the, the Genesis old school ones were a lot better than this. Okay, next is the Nintendo 64, which is another system I really haven't been actively collecting for, because the games I want to get are super expensive and have been for the longest time. Uh, the only reason I bought these games is because I made deals on Facebook for a really good price, and um, yeah, I couldn't pass them up for the price they were going for. Starting with Forsaken 64. Um, if you ever played Descent for the PlayStation, I don't know if that came out for Nintendo 64 also, but it's like a 3D uh, multiplayer. Well, I know there is a multiplayer element. Like, it's hard to explain. It's like you're on a, you're on like these these flying hover motorcycles going through these tunnels in these like multiplayer type arenas, just blowing other things out of the air. Um, it is fun. Although the graphics on this are not the greatest. I mean, it is kind of confusing at times, but it is a fun game nonetheless. It's not bad. Ridge Racer 64. Uh, yeah, it's a racing game. Can't have enough racing games. I, I'm starting to get back into these also. Uh, not the greatest version of Ridge Racer. I still prefer the first one for the PlayStation 1. But this one is pretty cool also. The big one, Star Fox 64, complete with the Rumble Pack. Uh, yeah, I got this for just under $40. I want to say it was like mid, th maybe $35-ish. Um, yeah, can't complain for that price. Awesome game. I remember playing the shit out of this back when I when I originally had purchased it. Um, super fun game. Classic in all the, all the right ways. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. I love that game. And then Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Classic, classic, classic game. Um, 
first game that I remember ever needing the expansion pack. And I remember the day that this game came out, the expansion pack was released. And I went to a Best Buy and was sitting in their parking lot before they opened to get a copy of both. <laughs> what can I say? I was a hardcore gamer back then. I kept it real. Um, but super awesome game. I now have all the games in this series. You'll see some of them later. Yeah. Okay, next is the Sega Dreamcast, which, as you all know, is a system that I'm striving to get a complete collection of. And uh, it's, I'm, I've been getting a lot of games at good prices lately in local stores, on Amazon, and surprisingly on eBay. Uh, more, more so on Amazon. Uh, I found a game in this stack here that normally goes for oh, almost $100. I got it for under 30 I think it was just over $20. Uh, starting with Charge and Blast, which is a... I don't know. I haven't opened, I haven't opened it yet. <laughs> I can't really tell. It looks like Godzilla's in it. <laughs> It's like a run-and-gun game from behind your character, so think of like uh, Gears of War, uh, where your character's really small, though, running around just shooting everything in sight. So picture 3D Contra, and that's what it looks like. I read that the reviews of this, they say it's awesome, so that's why I picked it up. And I got it for, I think, a dollar and a half, brand new. Um, Evil Dead, Hail to the King. I have this for the PlayStation 1 also, um, but I do prefer this version of it, which is the one that I had back in the day. Now that I have this, I have every Evil Dead game that has ever been made for a home console. Let that sink in. Groovy. Um, Iron Aces it is a uh, air flight or a air combat simulator. Sorry, um, I haven't opened it yet, but the reviews on this were also very good, and I got this for I think another dollar fifty, brand new. Amazon, man. Sometimes you just gotta know where to look. Here's the game that I got for the super cheap price, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. It is a fighting game by Capcom that is bizarre. It is very Japanese, goofy as all hell, um, but it is also a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, I had this back in the day, did pay full price for it back then, uh, and I remember I got a pretty penny for it when I did have to sell it, but I got this for like $23 or something like that on uh, Amazon, which is a steal, and it is in good shape. I am so happy that I have this in my collection now. Rayman 2, The Great Escape. Um, yeah, side-scrolling awesomeness. Uh, I love the first Rayman. This one is even better, I think, if you ask, in my personal opinion. Uh, a lot more puzzle stuff going on. Awesome game. Graphics and music are beautiful. Now there's these two. Tomb Raider Chronicles and Tomb Raider The Last Revelation. Uh, these are probably, in my opinion, the two worst... Tomb Raider games in the entire series. Not counting Angel of Darkness. I never did play that when it came out, but just from word of mouth. I don't even know if I want to add that one to my collection, but I might just so I can say that I have every Tomb Raider game. You know what I'm saying? But this is where Eidos and Core started to get extremely lazy, and it shows because the games are just not fun to play at this point. Um, and, and didn't get fun again until uh, Tomb Raider Legend came out for the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox. But, I mean, I got these really cheap. And I wasn't going to complain because I was just kind of like, you know what? I have to have them if I want a complete collection, so whatevs. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. Don't need to say much about that. It's awesome. Better than the first one. A lot cooler. Which leads to Trick Style, which is basically Tony Hawk on hoverboards. It's it's cool. It's fun. It's kind of control-wise. It's kind of... But it's not bad. Vigilante 8, Second Offense. This is uh, the sequel. I do believe the first one came out on PlayStation 1. Um, it's a car comic game like Twisted Metal. Not as good. Although the cars and everything are a lot bigger than they are in, two, in uh, Twisted Metal. Uh, and the controls are a little strange. But um, it's not as good as Twisted Metal, but it's definitely better than Star Wars Demolition. And then there's Wild Metal, uh, which I just recently purchased, and I think got this for like 3 bucks. Um, it's a tank combat game, haven't played it yet, but it looks pretty awesome from the back. Uh, lots of enemies to fight and different uh, locations to fight in. Um, I'll have to check it out, maybe I'll even do a review on it, because I was not aware of this game when it first came out. I didn't know anything about it until I started messing around on Amazon. That's it for that.